use headphones for best experience. Asymarctica ASMR on Apple Music or Spotify for example you will find a lot of albums here so you can listen to a lot of my content audio only today I'd like to talk a bit about runes runes the runic alphabet and I would like to write some runes after I did the um, hieroglyph uh, wax carving video I got a really uh, nice um, response on that one so I'm very glad you liked that video and thank you for all the nice comments and suggestions for upcoming videos and I got some suggestions about um, carving runes and I thought it was a really good idea actually and I haven't been so into runes before but lately I have started to read about it and learn and uh, study it um, and it's so fascinating I like it a lot this old uh, um, alphabet used in the Nordic uh, Nor Northern Europe about uh, 2000 years ago it, it started some time there I think and then until um, 1000 years ago when it was replaced by the Latin alphabet approximately but it actually it, would, it was used in some places and in some contexts uh, even in the 17th, 18th maybe even 19th century in Sweden some places in Sweden in calendars, I think. So it uh, it was a long process replacing it with the Latin alphabet. And I would like to talk a bit about this runestone, Bro Stenen. You can find it in uh, Bro. It's uh, north of Stockholm not very far from Stockholm and it's a very nice runestone it's very clear you can read it quite easily even though it's you, you start here and it's very winding line like this and from here you, st you start to read here and it jumps from here to here and then it goes like that to here the uh, inscription ends and I was actually here a couple of days ago visiting this stone and I will show you a short clip from my Instagram one minute only um, so you can see uh, this uh, stone from a very close up image O E K. 
อะอุยคิคะสุอัลดฟอร์มอัลเวิร์ดวิกิงสิสต์กินลุกทีอัลฟาเบตคอนสิสต์ของแค่16คาแรคเตอร์สดังนั้นบางคาแรคเตอร์ถูกแบ่งออกไปสองหรือสามเสียงเช่นคดังนั้นนี่จะถูกเรียกว่าบทคและกดังนั้นนี่คือชื่อของเขาอ่ากินลาวก์ or in modern Swedish กุนลาวก์These are. There are two different, uh, even though there are only 16 letters, two of them represent some kind of R. And this type of R is the non-trilling R. It's not R. It's R, more like the how R is pronounced in English. And this type of R was used mostly in the end of words. So if you have would have an R in the beginning of a word or in the middle, then it would probably be the other type of R. But here it says Tutir, and that's, um, remember T, 
or I haven't <laughs> told you this yet, but T could be the letter for both the T sound and the D sound. And the, the first one is a D sound, and the second one is a T sound, so it's do dotir, which means daughter. So that's quite easy to see the meaning of this word. So, take the first row here. Uh, Kinluk, Holm, Kis, Totir. So, Kinlauk, Holm, Geirs, Totir. Continue here. Sorry, s e s t e r sister, and that's uh, as you might guess, it's a sister in Swedish, modern Swedish, sister. So here we have um, a special rune. This is not considered one of the 16 letters, it's, uh, it's a version of the U rune with a dot in the middle here uh, then it's, um, I think this was a quite late invention in the foot arcs in the rune al runic alphabet mm, that they added some uh, uh, diacritic marks, if you can call it that um, to change the sound of the of the, the pronunciation of the rune slightly, so it's not sustir, it's sustir, so here we have a Y letter. Uh, yeah, the R that appears at the end of words again. This is also a grammatical uh, suffix here. So the name Sigrad is si Sukruth, Sukruth. And then A and R at the end is also some kind of genitive. So it means that it's yeah, it's still about uh, uh, Kindluk, Kundluk. It's um, sis sister Sigredar. Instead of saying Sigredar's sister, here it says it starts with sister and then you have to add AR to show you that it's 
the, the grammatical function of it. So, Sigrudar, or sister Sigrudar, Sigrudar, Sigrud's sister. Um, yeah, it's uh, in modern Swedish. It says it's Y, it's E here as well, but you can't see it in the in the letter here. There is there's no dot in the middle here. Should be pronounced more like Sukrudar. Sukrudar. Suk Here we have the other R rune. That's more like a trill, like R. Suk R. O. Th. Well, in this case, I think it's Th, not a thorn. This this can be pronounced like T H how you usually write it in English, th, but in the middle of words and in the end of words it could more often be pronounced like the ed, you know, th also, but um, uh, like in th this, th-i-s in English, the, that sound more close to a D letter instead of a T letter, so it's su grudar. Yeah, and the K is softer as well, so it's more like a G than a K. su grudar. This is a very common word, you see it a lot in this inscription. Aok. Aok means just uh, ok in Swedish. Ok, very common word. It's a word and. So, um, A and U stands for o, the O sound in this case. I'm not sure. Maybe it was pronounced, mo pronounced more like AUK back in these days, or it's just the way of, of uh, writing the O sound using two runes like this, because yeah, sometimes maybe you had to use two runes to show you one sound, because there were too few of them. But I'm not sure. Maybe you pronounced it AUK and then it developed into ok in modern Swedish. This is Thaira, the thorn, the th in the beginning. Tha i r a. Um, I'm not sure exactly about this word. In other inscriptions, I've seen, seen that Thaira should mean there. But here it says to. But that's maybe because the next word is uh, it's a bit unusual and uh, I'm not sure it's clearly known what this means. I've seen it says uh, gout or gauss in modern Swedish yet and a yet it's a p 
person um, that is a who is a member of the Geats, the inhabitants of Jötaland in the south, not the very southern parts of Sweden, but yeah, in the south of Sweden. Um, because uh, the, what's now the most southern part of Sweden, it was uh, Danish for a long time. But then we have Jötaland, where the Geats were a very big uh, group. Um, and before Sweden was uh, uni unified into one country, there were like a lot of wars between Swedes and Geats and Goots, another big group. Um, so a thousand years ago, I think Sweden was maybe unified, but it was, I guess it was still a lot, a lot of different, uh, it was strong identity probably if you were Swede or a Geet. Um, so maybe this means Geet somehow. Thaira, Thaira cows. Because yeah, again, K could be could be a G G sound. So cows. And this is Aun. This is A, this is N. Quite similar, but uh, you can see the diagonal uh, small uh, stroke here is a uh, different uh, angles. And Aun means Hun in modern Swedish. Quite similar, hun, aun, and that means she. This is very similar in both English and modern Swedish. It's uh, lät in Swedish and let in English. So she let. Should be pronounced G in this case. And here we have another new letter, e, the E sound. So it uh, reminds of the A, but uh, it's a little bit shorter stroke in the middle and it has a horizontal angle. And it's also a bit late invention, I think. Um, it wasn't part of the earlier versions of the Futhark, of the younger Futhark. This is written in younger Futhark. So 
Plutarch is just a name for for the writing system, and it's named for the first six let runes. Just like alphabet is named from the two first letters in in the alphabet, alpha, beta, the Greek alphabet. The Futhark starts with F. So F O T H A R K. The elder Futhark had uh, twenty-four letters of r or runes, and the younger Futhark had only sixteen runes. And they were added some modification to some of them. So I guess to show you to show E sound or not E sound but you, you know what's now the letter E in English or an E E sound. K A R A and that's Kiara. In uh, runic Swedish and in the modern Swedish, it has be it has become yara because g has turned into y in uh, in Swedish in many cases. So yara is what we say today in Swedish, and that means to do. So yeah, yara is do or make Basically, you can see it's a it's a mix of I and A, or uh, phonetically E and A. That's E in this case. Just uh, this one is smaller and it's just uh, horizontal. This line. Um, and uh, the Fessy means uh, yeah, bru fessy or bru thessa um, means this thessa is this and uh, bru is bru in modern Swedish but in English it's bridge. So let's go back. She or Aon Lit Gara Bru Thessi. She let make this bridge. Um, let make. I'm not sure you have that expression in English, but in Swedish we still have Lot Gara. Let make, let's do something. Um, and that's just uh, a way of saying that she, it's still about, you know, you remember, good luck. She was the one that um, 
made this uh, construction of this bridge possible. See that make it and a bridge at this time was not was not a very it it was not so complicated uh, construction that you might imagine when you hear the word bridge. It could be just uh, an embankment of the road somewhere where it was like maybe it was a bit wet. Uh, when it was raining a lot and it was difficult to pass this part of the road and then you could create some kind of embankment on the road This word you might remember already. It's auk. Ok. And You see the R in the beginning of words pronounced R. So it's the same almost in modern Swedish and also in English. It's uh, Riasa or race. The English word actually is more, uh, reminds more of the old Norse or runic Swedish word So this means uh, this stone, stein, that's sten in modern Swedish, and stone in English. Thena is, became thena and then denna in Swedish. So we have stein, thena. And earlier we had somewhere here bru thesi and both these words mean this so I guess they were they were like inflected depending on the gender perhaps or the, the, the case of the of the noun Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, there were m much more complicated grammar in uh, runic Swedish. More like, I guess, uh, modern German. With a lot of gra gra grammatic cases and uh, uh, different genders of words. So you have to inflect words and consider what gender it was and the, the noun but 
this form, Thena, Thina, is the one that mostly reminds of today's word for this in Swedish. Thena. letter of the Futhark. So Eftir means after in English and Efter in modern Swedish. Quite easy to see. Some line lines on the um, runes are I mean, most of them are straight lines or diagonal lines, but some are curved like this. But it's much easier to draw straight lines when I carve in this material. And I guess it was also much easier to carve straight lines in maybe in stones, but mostly I have read that the reason why the runes are so are shaped like this with just uh, straight lines and diagonal lines or um, vertical lines not very often horizontal lines actually just uh, a couple of exceptions and uh, not so many curved lines it's more vertical lines and diagonal lines it was because um, the runes were carved not so much in stones, especially not in the beginning. The stones are, are from the late Viking Age. It was carved in other materials, maybe bone, maybe um, yeah, softer materials, and in wood, probably a lot in wood, but these are not preserved. So they lost all the evidence of the runes in wood. But when you carve in wood, it's uh, much easier to carve vertical lines and diagonal lines, not horizontal lines, because then it gets a bit problematic because of the, the veins of the wood. So that's probably why this type of a script was developed in the first place. But now we don't have any a lot of evidence at all from from the runes in wood. This is a misspelling, or if it was spelled like this, but this should be asur. But here it says as u u. I would expect this rune as the last one, but it was spelled in another way here. So it was aso to u runes at the end, and this is important name in this context because uh, Gunlag uh, let make 
this uh, bridge and raise this stone after Asur, that's the name. And this stone in Bru, in the, located in, in uh, the place Bru, uh, it's also called Asur's stone. It's a name, Asur. destroyed now, I think I have to change, replace it with another tool, I can try a metal tool, Let's see how it feels. Swedish. It means, in this case, her. So it can be his or her. Or its, probably. Um, punta is in modern Swedish bunde, I think. At least the word bunde comes from this word. But it had a bit uh, different meaning by this time. Uh, now, bonde means uh, peasant or farmer in Swedish. But historically, I think it was more like, or in this case at least, it means it's uh, Kinlug's husband. Puntasin, her husband. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but they were probably farmers and uh, and uh, called the husband on a farm, probably for you called uh, him Punta. So that's interesting how this word has developed from this time when probably most people in Sweden were farmers then punta meant just man or husband yeah I think maybe it's more man than husband but yeah. her man her husband let's go Swedish son and in English son son so very similar in all languages 
all those like Here it is. Hakonar. Hakonar. Another name. Hakon. Hakan in Swedish. Hakon, Norwegian, for example. Very common name. Um, in the Nordic countries, at least. Um, so. And R at the end just means the genitive suffix. So, Sun Hakunar means son to son of Hoka. Jarls, Jarls, and this means Jarl. So we we have Hokon Jarl. It's two. The names consist of two names, but this is more like a title, I guess. We have the old English title Jarl. The Jarl was the highest rank below the king. just uh, he and in modern Swedish it uh, doesn't sound like Sar at all it's Han so I don't know what happened with this old Norse or runic Swedish word Sar where it ended up It's a quite fun part in the inscription, I think, because it looks like the person who wrote these uh, runes had forgot one letter, because it looks like this, and then it's a small rune here, in between, an A rune, but much smaller, and not all the way to the bottom here. So it's a 
O A R. War. Um, and I think this is just a mistake. Um, and this is var, var in modern Swedish, var, very similar, and in English, was. showed you in the beginning of this video that I was showing you at, at the actual stone that I visit. So it's Wikika. Wikika. And uh, that's uh, Viking. In uh, modern Swedish it would be Vikinga. So Viking with an A at the end, and this this is probably a gram grammatical function because when in the word stands alone, I think it's more Vikinger, Vikinger. But here is Vikinga. Yeah? And you have to see it in context here. This is uh, the thorn that is softer at the in the middle of the word, so it's an ed sound. Vorder, and that means a guardian somehow, some kind of guardian. So, Asse was, was, Vikinga, Vorder. So somehow he must have protected the land, the area, from Vikings at this point. So the Vikings were considered enemies or warriors, raiders, by these people at this point. It's super interesting, I think, to see the word Viking written in the Viking Age, see how it was used by the by the people in the Viking Age. Uh, so everyone wasn't Vikings. You can see here, here evidence of that. Short word here. Myth or 
mid the, the yeah since this is in at the end of the word is mid the m e the l the med in modern Swedish it has become med and that means just with to mention this was a new letter we introduced a new letter here for the first time the M looks like the second R or the R for at the end of words but flip it upside down so here we have Probably be pronounced g softer, I think. So, kaiti, kaiti. And in the translation I've seen, it's it's a question mark. So they don't really know what it could mean. But it reminds of cows a bit, I think. K a o s k a e. Maybe it could have something to do with the uh, geats again, or probably goats. These tribes, these uh, people in parts of today Sweden. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. So he was a Viking Averdur. Guardian for Vikings together with Gaiti. in modern Swedish good uh, God Swedish Yelpe. That's not so modern, it's an old form. Yelpe with e, e at the end, but let's see what happens. Good Yelpe. remember how to um, 
distinguish these two shapes. These are, are quite similar. A and N, as you can see. Try to remember how so I don't get it wrong. But I, th I think uh, like this, the N is if we take a Latin N, if we continue this line to the right and make a line like this, it will become like an N. And uh, in this case, if we do something like that, it could be an A. <laughs> but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's quite intuitive to me, actually. This is more like an N than an A to me. And this is more like an A than an N, somehow. Um, Hans. In modern Swedish, Hans. In English, his. This could also be pronounced with the T, the T at the end here, softer, so and, and, and in modern Swedish, and, spirit. interesting kind of shows that uh, writing with the runes this alphabet was a kind of phonetic alphabet so you you wrote the letter that the letters that you heard somehow the phonetic value of it because this should mean ok ok but in the cases earlier in this text we had we had it written a ö Auk, and here it's just uk, more similar to modern Swedish spelling, ok. So, in modern Swedish, skäl. So we changed uh, quite a lot from salu to skäl, but in English it's actually soul. So the English word is more common, more um, similar to the old Norse. So the last part of the inscription here was Kud uh, Yalpi Hans Nu Out Ok Salu God Did I talk about the translation of hjälp? It's hjälp in Swedish and help in mm. English. So it's uh, almost the same. God helps his now 
spirit and soul. This now is is uh, placed a bit odd here in the context. Should uh, make should make more sense today if we had it can't help before before his. And this um, is shows that uh, Sweden at this point, the 11th century at this place near Stockholm, today Stockholm, was uh, Christi Christianized. So when you see the word soul, for example, or uh, spirit out, I guess, and of course God. then uh, you can be sure it's uh, the persons who made this were Christian and and uh, Sweden was Christianized by this time quite a lot I guess uh, it was a long process but uh, in earlier uh, in earlier um, places where you can see uh, runes several hundred years earlier than this then it's more common to see uh, to see uh, names like Thor, Odin those those old Norse deities so and many runestones have this type of message so it's a it's a person and then their relatives how who is this uh, person married? I mean, the family relations to that person. So you can identify him or her. What they did, and they did raise a stone, <laughs> apparently, because there are, you can see this on stones. And where of, very often they also created a bridge uh, beside the stone. So, so it was easy to follow the road there. It would be nicely embankment or bridge to walk and then you, the stone was just beside the road so you can so everyone could see it when they were passing by and it was decorated sometimes with images and uh, it was for someone who had died very 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 often so this time it, it was Ginnelag's husband uh, Asur and uh, who uh, was Asur yeah he was the Håkon's son and um, Håkon Jarl, Jarl's son and um, what uh, he did in his life was uh, that he was a viking avarder guardian against Vikings together with Katie that we don't know exactly what it means and you want to add at the end very often something with like God helps his spirit and soul so you could that was a message and uh, proof proof that uh, these persons were Christians and had left the Old Norse religion behind. This is the entire inscription from Bro Stenen or Asser's stone. You can read it again. Ginlök Holmkes Totir Sistir Sikrudar. 
Vera goes. On let Chiara Bru Sessi Auk Raisa Stein Thina Eftir Asur Punta Sin Sun Hakunar Jarls Sar Var Vikika Vardur Mid Keti Kud Jalpi Hans No Out Ok Salu as well in English. Kin Lauk Holmkish daughter sister to Sigrid and their gouts. She let make this bridge and raise this stone. After Asur her husband son of Hakon Yarn he was Viking Guardian with Kaiti God helps his now his spirit and soul And they are decorated with cross. Also, sign that it is uh, Christian. They belong to the Christian religion. See the first ye first word here. K e n l o. Last word here. Upside down. Salu. And here we have the word that I showed you in the beginning. Wiki. Viking. Something related to Vikings. And I don't know why there are no N before the K, it's just V kick. Uh, and K could 
be um, read as g, but if you, I mean today the word is Viking with the ng sound, and you can't see anything of that, at least uh, these inscriptions or any other d inscriptions from this time where, where the word Viking is written. So either it was pronounced more Vikik at this point, or you know, just uh, or the the K, this rune could also stand for ng sound. Not sure. And um, yeah, the A is uh, just that. Um, it has to do with the next word, the waurthur, vordur, wikika, vordur. So it's the guardian of Vikings. It has a grammatical function, the, this A. And today in Swedish, actually, we still use the A after viking, so vikinga grav. It's a Viking grave. Viking uh, Tid, that's the Viking Age. Viking a Ship, that's a Viking ship. So that's the uh, that's a letter we we add to the end of Viking, the root, how to say Viking, and then we add a ah, to show you that the next this. Uh, word is related to Viking somehow. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Sleep well.